everyone, Bernard here, hope you're all very well. A little special today, we've not done a little special for a while, where we talk about something that's new on TV that's uh, got a bit of background to it, and I'll just have a little talk about what's happened before this. Today we're going to look at a Channel 5 production, obviously, and I'll tell you more about that in a minute with, with other uh, organisations, and it's a, a TV series that was very, very popular in the UK and in the US, the United States, and in a lot of the Commonwealth countries uh, back in the day. Obviously, we've got a remake now, we've got an updated version, an adaptation, if you like, which is, does cause controversy, doesn't it, when we adapt these old series into new ones, uh, and it's called All Creatures Great and Small. Please, if you're new to the channel, push that subscribe button, push the bell notification so you know all these little movie reviews, TV drama reviews, um, information vlogs and little specials like this come out from time to time. As I said, I do I do some of these, but this is the first one I've done for a while on this. Yeah, it's um, a new 2020 television series, All Creatures Great and Small, based, of course, upon the books uh, about the Yorkshire Vets, written by Alf Wright under the pen name of James Herriot. A bit more on him in the moment. Uh, this series from Channel 5 is seven episodes, consists also of a special, a Christmas special, which is always great. It's been filmed in conjunction with the, conjunction with the 50th anniversary of the publication of James Herriot's first book in the series, uh, All Creatures Great and Small. It wasn't called that, but that's, that's the, the series name. The show revolves around a trio of veterinary surgeons working in the Yorkshire Dales eccentric Seagrid fan and who would like not to have an assistant and has tried to put off many many as we can tell by the first episode of this new adaptation uh, eventually uh, sort of falls for the 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 little the scots james herriot and obviously invites him into his veterinary practice at skeldale house in Darabee in the Yorkshire Dales, obviously all fiction, all fictional names of real places. These, besides Siegfried and James, and Siegfried's younger brother Tristan and Mrs. Hall, the housekeeper at the house, amongst the gaggle of farmers and clients, we also will be introduced to Helen, who's James's future love interest. The se the original series was shot in the this series, sorry, was shot in the Yorkshire Dales, produced by. Playground Entertainment for Channel 5 in the United Kingdom and PBS in the United States. Uh, the B, having a look at the um, background to this, the original BBC series, which was broadcast between 78 and 1990 in a couple of batches, was filmed largely in the northern part of the Dales, which I'm very familiar with, Wensleydale, Swaledale, whereas this new series, uh, just a little for a change, has been filmed further south in the national park around Nidderdale, which I don't have any memories of. I may have to, may have to take a few visits there in the future. Uh, filmed in Grassington in Wharfdale, um, Grassington in Wharfdale has been used for the setting for the fictional town in this new series of Darabi. Askrig, which I have been to many times, was used in the original BBC series. Yeah, a little bit more about the background. The man, obviously, James Alfred Wright, OBE, FRCVS, was born on the 3rd of October 1916 and died, passed away on the 23rd of February 1995. He's better known, of course, by his pen name, James Herriot. And he was a British veterinary surgeon and writer, obviously with the, with a Scots background. Although White claimed in the in the preface of his James Herriot, uh, James Herriot's Yorkshire, that he had begun to write only after his wife encouraged him at the age of fifty. Uh, it is believed he in fact kept copious diaries as a child. As a teenager, he wrote for various school magazines, and he even tried even tried to hands it as an, as a novel. And as a busy life as a vet, you can bet he kept little notes of uh, obviously which he later would use for this series of books. Uh, Wright's books are obviously partially autobiographical. Many of the stories loosely based on real events or people in this fictional town of, of Darby. Uh, which White described as a composite of Thirsk, again, I've put him too many times, it's nearby market towns Richmond, Leyburn and Middleham, and a fair chunk of his own imagination thrown into there. The original book series, there was uh, eight books originally, there's been various things redone, etc., but the original series uh, was If Only They Could Talk in 1970, it should, this is the UK, this is the UK versions, it shouldn't happen to a vet, 72, Let Sleeping Vets Lie, 1973, Vet in Harness 1974, Vets Might Fly 1976, Vet in the Spin 1977, The Lord God Made Them All 1981 and Every Living Thing in 1992. He did also write children's books 
and a couple of books about Yorkshire, which I have again I've read and and had, and had both of the, of the two books he did feature Yorkshire. In. Many of the stories are set in the 1930s to 1950s, but uh, were inspired by cases a bit more modern that uh, White attended in the 60s and 70s, where whilst he had his surgery. Um, yeah, they were very popular, as I mentioned before, in the United States. They picked up uh, picked up these books um, quite early on, and obviously common, Commonwealth countries, English-speaking countries, the great popularity. Uh, film-wise, I mean, television-wise, film-wise, obviously, as, as well as the BBC series, uh, 1975, there was a, a made-for-TV film, All Creatures Great and Small, with Simon Ward playing James Herriot. I mean, that's got a 6.5 out of 10 uh, rating on Internet Movie Database. That was followed a year later by another made-for-TV movie. It shouldn't happen to a vet. This time, John Alderton played the part of James Herriot. But of course, it was the BBC who brought the books to life and created created a tourism industry. Actually, uh, for, for obviously the Yorkshire Dales and the Harriet Trail, which uh, is still very popular today, as it was uh, uh, twenty thirty years ago. Uh, the television uh, series ran in two parts. It ran from seventy eight to eighty and eighty eight to ninety, and in total, ninety episodes were actually broadcast broadcast uh, with Christopher Timothy playing James Herriot, Robert Hardy as Siegfried and Peter Davidson as Tristan. I mean, it has a rating on Internet Movie Database, a user rating of 8.3 out of 10. There's not many things get that sort of high rating consistently over time. Uh, there's a current, obviously a current spin-off for that. There's a current Channel 5 TV series. I'm not sure if you've seen it outside of the UK. If, you, if you're outside of the UK, it's still running on the real life adventures of vets in the Dales and it's a popular TV so a series called the Yorkshire Vet, and one of the vets actually featured was a, a past associate of James Herriot uh, or Jane Alf White, as we know him. Uh, and this popularity, I think, has probably uh, urged Channel Five to do this little ad adaptation in a new TV series. Uh, that that has actually run the Yorkshire Vets run for 104 episodes as I'm doing this. I think it's just started a new series, so it's still very very popular, and that scores 8.7 out of 10 on Internet Movie Data's Internet Movie Database as well. So again, very very popular. So you can understand the the the, feel, the thinking behind Channel Five now doing a brand new series. So on to All Creatures Great and Small 2020. We've had the first episode, so I'm looking at the first episode rather than the whole series. Uh, as they say, if it ain't broke, why fix it? Well, Channel, Channel 5 have decided to have a go, haven't they, and bring, bring us this latest adaptation. Um, say there's going to be seven episodes, um, including a Christmas special, which will be fantastic. As you can probably tell by my visits to these various locations, I am a fan of the film and the TV series and the books. I mean, I think I've read most of the books, if not all the books. I can't remember now. I'll have to go back and read again. But uh, my wife at the time, my ex-wife now, was a massive fan of James Herriot. And we spent many, many wonderful days out uh, visiting over the M62 there, over from, we, we live in Manchester, obviously Lancashire, over the M62 into Yorkshire, into the Yorkshire Dales. Some great days out visiting all the all the real towns and the sites of the Yorkshire Dales that we saw on the TV series, uh, and we followed the Harriet Trail and saw all that and did did all the touristy things, which is fantastic. Over over a, probably a few years, we did that. Uh, I've watched the films and the original episodes many, many times. The film's not quite as good as the TV episodes. Um, but to bring this marvellous story back, um, perhaps to a newer audience as well as those old people who remember, you know, all those older guys and, and ladies who remember the, the original. Um, so that, despite, if you think about it, I, I, I can watch, I haven't watched one for a couple of years, but I could still watch the old series even up to a couple of years ago, and I certainly could now if I went back and watched, as I said, obviously my time, <laughs> I have to watch a lot of new things these days, but uh, yeah, it is wonderful, it still stands the test of time, not not dated too much, it's still brilliant to watch, if you've never seen it, and you're obviously watching this new one and enjoying it, please, please go back and watch the original. So we had episode one, which was entitled You Got to Dream. It starred Nicholas Raft as Harriet, Samuel West as Siegfried, Anna Madeley as Mrs. Hall, Rachel Shenton as Helen Alderson. Uh, future episodes, of course, will include uh, Tristan, played by Callum Woodhouse. And we'll also have appearances, I believe, by Diana Rigg and Nigel Havers, which, which I look forward to. Is it any good? Well, the Internet Movie Database... 
Again, based on 29 ratings, very, very positive. I've read lots, and there's no real negativity in any of the reviews I've read. It's getting an 8.3 out of 10 rating, which is on a, on a par with the original, obviously, and that's very, very kind to it. Um, comments like pleasantly surprised yeah i mean i can i can back that, that up uh an enjoyable jaunt back to my youth yeah well go and watch the originals that'd be an even better jaunt wouldn't it the first episode was okay someone wrote but I'll still give it a reasonable score so not not bad views from other people as i said obviously people have only watched this as i'm as i'm re as i'm doing this vlog now it was last last evening so obviously those those ratings and reviews will grow as time passes yeah, I mean, the success of the original TV series, my little thought on the actual episode one, I mean, the, the success on the original TV was was the complete package, really, wasn't it? It wasn't just the storylines, it was it was the actors and the, and the actual chemistry between the actors, not just the actors, but the characters, obviously, they were playing in the, in the actual series. Um, it was spot on. Uh, the scenery was wonderful in the original. The scenery is pretty good in this as well, and there was a lot of humour taking part in the episode in the original episodes as well. Um, and to be honest with you, this episode one, the lighter side, the humour episodes didn't didn't quite work for me. They appeared a little bit forced, and they weren't overly funny to me. I mean, I, I appreciated them, but they, they sort of didn't have that sort of impact to me. They're a little little bit forced. I mean. Uh, on that basis of, of last night's actors, um, Nicholas Raff doesn't quite sit right just at the moment with the with the vulnerable James Herriot character that I'm used to seeing. He does okay, don't get me wrong, and I'm sure uh, it will grow on me as this uh, progresses. But let's face it, he's got some big boots to fill, as as have the as, as have the other stars, of course, because of the original star for me, even in the original, wasn't particularly James Herriot, I was probably mean to say, but with the fans, wasn't it? They were the ones who kept me back watching and what I really enjoyed watching. I did enjoy James Herriot's character, etc., but it was always the fans, it was always Siegfried and Tristan that really affect me. And um, Siegfried in this, played by Samuel West, again with big boots to fill, hasn't he? With uh, did a, did again an okay task. I mean, I've seen a couple of complimentary reviews. He did he did a good job as Siegfried. He isn't Siegfried. He's not the Siegfried I know and love. But yeah, he did a did a certainly passable job of that. Anna Maidley plays a less less sterner Mrs. Hall. We did see a kinder side of Mrs. Hall, didn't we, in the originals? But obviously, very quickly in this, we do get to feel that she's she's a really kind woman. Obviously, a little bit younger, I think, than the original one as well. And she's very likable, as, as all the characters were last night that we came across. Um, and we'll get to see. Well, we've only got to see two or three of the farmers or the clients, and they they were a big part of the original series as well. I mean, when when obviously these these guys kept popping up in different episodes. I mean, you obviously you know the Mrs. Pomfrits, but some of the farm pom Pomfrits, <laughs> Pomfrit, whatever her name was, it's was a potato, isn't it? Yeah, but the, the farmers also kept popping in, and they they were looked forward to in the original series, and I'm sure one or two in this uh, will be looked forward to, although it's a bit early days. To, to go along with that and we do have to look forward obviously Mrs Mrs Pumphrey or Pumphrey or whatever her name is is obviously going to be Diana Riggs so as I said that's something really look look forward to it of course the actors aren't going to play it the same way as the original series they're going to put their own little slant to it but you, you've you got to see a little bit of nod haven't we? we've got to see a little bit of nod to the originals and obviously episode by episode that'll probably grow uh, it's not going to be an easy job is it I mean these these originals are ingrained in, in people my age and uh, people who love the original, us fans anyway, it's got to be ingrained, the originals are going to be ingrained and these are, these new guys will have to put their own little slant on it but it will be a difficult task. Uh, I did en I did enjoy it though. I mean, I'm, I do have one or two criticisms. I'm not as I'm not in the eight point three score range that some of these people are coming out. I mean, one reviewer did point out that the the children were playing with hula hoops, and if this is set between the thirties and forties, which I think it is. I mean, there's no mention of the war. I'm looking at various things. I don't think they were around then. So. They might have to try a little bit harder, but obviously there's, there's always going to be people who are going to criticise the time and the things. I'm not too worried about that as long as long as it's not stupid and too, you know, obviously too well out of date. 
Uh, it's a sort of series. Let's be honest about it. It's the sort of se series we're, we're crying out for at this time. I do, I do enjoy horror films and sci-fi and films about pandemics, etc., which seem to be the rage at the moment. But it is at this point in time in the world, as I'm recording this on the second of September, 2020, it is a, a sort of series we we want, isn't it? It's something a little bit nicer, something a little bit more laid back and pleasant to watch, which, which is nice. And uh, of course, I'm just a bit gutted there's not more episodes in this first series. The seven episodes, you know, doesn't they could, they could have done with another 12, 12 or 13. If the, if the Americans had done it, we would have had at least 8, 10, 12, wouldn't we? So, it's, but seven, we'll have to be happy with seven. And as I said, I look forward to uh, the Christmas special because obviously I love, a, I love a Christmas special on a favourite programme. So I do look forward to that because I always, I always love a Christmas special. Yeah, so... Yeah, not a bad job done. As I said, I'm not going to gush over it like some of the other reviewers who were giving it eights and nines out of ten. It is very, very good. I, I did enjoy. I did enjoy it, and that's all I can say. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a little respectable score. I'm gonna give it a nice, comfortable six point five out of ten for a nice, comfortable episode, episode one, which uh, sort of uh, told us a little bit of background. But I mean, uh, we know all the background, don't we? We know all the backstory. We just want them to get on with it and carry on and perhaps carry on where the others left off, which is impossible, obviously. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to give it a respectable 6.5 out of 10. Please, if you do watch this, you know, let me know what you thought of episode one. Uh, well, uh, I may come back and do a review of the whole series when it's finished, and certainly the Christmas special, I'll do a review of that and have a look back at that, see how it's progressed. And uh, does that 6.5 increase? Does Do I soon forget the old guys? Possibly not, but we'll see, won't we? Anyway, let me know in the comments what you think. Please, uh, thanks for watching this. Please check all my links on screen for uh, my movie reviews and TV drama reviews and information vlogs. And of course, if you're into football, I do little vlogs on my, my team in England, uh, Manchester City. So if that's of any interest to you, please, or someone you know might be interested, please point them in my direction. It'd be fantastic. Please follow me on Twitter and friend me on Facebook. I try to follow and friend everyone back. That'll be superb. Uh, my little website, my little day job, moviegamenostalgia.com for old and rare DVDs, movie posters from the 1900s and 2000s. And board games on there as well, so you can have a look at that. That would be very, very much appreciated. Anyway, thanks for watching today. And so you can join me again for something else. Please stay safe, everyone. That's all we can ask, isn't it? And whatever you're going to do with the rest of the day, have a great one. Look after yourselves, look after your friends, look after your family. More importantly, let's look after each other. And I'll see you again soon, hopefully. It's Bird is saying goodbye for now. Thanks for watching.